Hi there. Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, and sit down because you are going to love our program today. While you're grabbing it, I just wondered if you knew that men making coffee for women is scriptural and biblical. There's even a book in the Bible about it. He brews. He brews. Ha! <laughs> It's his job. Okay, so that was cheesy, but fun. Listen, today we have a guest and I am telling you, it, she's on fire. She is amazing. Uh, she really is a legend. She is a pioneer. She has her own program that streams right here on this station. She is an author. She is a doctor. She is a worldwide evangelist. She's been a pastor. She's a woman of God. She has mentored nations. And most of all, guess what? She's my spiritual mom. And she's the first woman that ever prophesied over me at Plant High School in 1991 and has been an amazing part of my life, my husband's life and my children's life. It's such an honor today to be able to do a program with Dr. Velma Childers. Um, but before we get to her, let's go to Stephanie's kitchen, the homekeeper's kitchen. She has a great recipe today. It's only 99 calories, chocolate Greek yogurt muffins. Let's go. It is another great day in the homekeeper's kitchen. I have Maddie Schoenbarger back with me. She is my pastor's daughter. Amazing personality, great soul, and I just thought it would be so much fun to have her on with us because I'm always saying, get your children in the kitchen, get your grandchildren in the kitchen, find some neighbor kids, I don't know, find them all, get them in the kitchen because it's a great place to make memories. So today we're making a 99 calorie double chocolate Greek yogurt muffin. How's that sound? It sounds really good. It sounds really, really good, but I tasted the batter earlier, so we'll just have to see how it is, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna put the dry ingredients in your bowl, I'm gonna put the wet ingredients in my bowl, and then we're gonna mix them all together, fold in some chocolate chips, and then we'll taste them, okay? Okay, okay so you have flour, and you have baking powder and baking soda, and then you have unsweetened cocoa powder. <clears throat> now these are supposed to be healthy, so that's why I'm not sure about how good they're gonna taste, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you can just slowly whisk together that. We just wanna get it really good and combined, perfect. And then I have Greek yogurt, and I have egg whites. I have unsweetened applesauce. That's why I'm, I'm just, oh, I don't know, I'm a little concerned about mm. these, we'll see. When I'm picking recipes, I'm trying to find things that are healthy, but that taste good. Because, <clears throat> you know, we all need to be, be careful of our health. There's egg whites. I have unsweetened apple sauce, just one container. And I have two tablespoons of maple sugar. <clears throat> and this may be where I, I went wrong. I didn't get really good maple syrup. I went with just, I think, decent maple syrup. <laughs> and it may be where I messed up. So we'll see. <laughs> Even if they're decent, if you're trying to be healthy and lose weight, if you can get something that's halfway sweet and halfway good, maybe it'll work, right? Yeah. I'm gonna put an eighth of a teaspoon of salt in there too. Get that all mixed in. And I'm gonna put <clears throat> a teaspoon of vanilla in mine. There we go. Now it I'm looks gonna, like chocolate. It does look like chocolate, right? That's vanilla. Yeah. So while we mix, tell me what is your favorite dessert? Donuts. Donuts is your favorite. You like to have donuts after, like after a meal? Um, sometimes, yeah. Because a lot of people consider donuts breakfast. I consider, consider them both. Okay. So what's your favorite donut? Glazed. Oh, so good. <laughs> like Krispy Kreme? Yeah. Oh yeah. That one's that's my favorite. <laughs> So good. I like anything chocolate for dessert. <clears throat> and I always want something sweet after I eat. That's why I'm trying to find healthy things. So if I could find something that's healthy and sweet for after I eat, it won't be so bad for me. Or I like crumble. Crumble? What? Like the cookie place. Okay. That one's good yeah. really too. Well, I work at a cookie place, you know, but it's not called crumble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put the wet and the dry together. 
And then I'll let you know when you can dump in the um, chocolate chips, okay? Okay. So I'll give you this. I'm going <clears> to <throat> clean up my mess as I go. Here we go. So we're just putting it, the wet and the dry together. I have a muffin tin over here with nine. This makes nine good-sized muffins. And you could always make mini muffins if you are really concerned about portion control. You're not there yet, I know, but a lot of <laughs> us are. Okay, go ahead and pour those chocolate chips in. Perfect. You're doing a fabulous job, Maddie. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm so happy to have you. I'm glad school's out so you could be here. <laughs> yeah. Will you do me a favor? In that top drawer right over there, just grab me two spoons. This one? Yep. I find that's the easiest the way. spoons? Or... Whatever you want. <clears throat> yep. That's the easiest way to... Oh, okay. <laughs> Make sure all that baking soda and powder is all broken up in there. It it smells good. It does. <laughs> but again, I tasted the batter and I was like, hmm, I'm not so sure how these are going to taste. Okay, so I'm going to take the muffin tin. And the easiest way I have found is just to get some up in the spoon and then use the other spoon to get it off. And it oh. makes not quite the mess. Right, and this is going to be at 375 for 15 minutes. It's really super simple to make, and this is called from scratch baking. It's not from a box. I always, I, I've always like wanted to do from scratch. Well, you are now. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side so we can taste one. Right. Let me get these. Okay. <laughs> are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> you can be honest. I have a feeling it's going to be a little dry. It does look a little oh, dry. Oh, yeah, it's a little dry. Don't get a close shot. <laughs> okay, and it's sticking to the... There we go. Okay, we'll just take a little bite. Just a little one. It, it has, like, I don't know, but I think... It it tastes good. It's not that bad. If you're trying to be healthy and you want something sweet, this is the recipe for you. The information will come up on your screen, and we'll see you next time. Well, those muffins were wonderful. The great news is they're biblical too because they're 99 calories. And you know, Jesus left the 99 good little sheep to go after the one lost sheep. So they are biblical muffins. <laughs> so this, I cannot tell you how long I have been looking forward to this show. This is a fulfillment of prophecy. This is um, just a dream come true because once I was born again and saved and just in love with Jesus and committed, I wanted a female example. And yet at that time in 1990, there were only a handful of women in ministry. And I kept looking for a model and an example and a mentor. And then one day I'm in a service in Plant High School um, in Tampa, Florida, and there is a speaker coming in. She's a woman, I was thrilled. And she ministered the word with power and authority and with just absolute grace and love. And then she came off the platform into the audience and she pointed at me and said, you, you are a modern day Joseph. I call you Josephine. And she began to prophesy over me things that only the Holy Spirit could tell a submitted vessel that had dedicated her life to serving God, to someone who lives by take no thought for your life, just obey. And so I'm blessed to call her a spiritual mother. My children call her Memi, they adore her. And during various seasons, she has literally been like a, a, Mar a Mary Poppins. She has packed her suitcases and just come and stayed until the Lord told her, okay, your assignment here's done. She travels the world. She's been preaching the gospel for over 50 years. She's an author 
And one of the endeavors that she's done lately, which I love, is hosting a television program called Forgiven, where she goes on the airwaves and she preaches about the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. She's anointed, she's precious, she's my spiritual mama. Would you welcome Dr. Velma Childers? Thank you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> it's so good to be back with you again, oh. my. What a joy. Full circle. And and I remember how we met. I, I remember that. I remember um, having prayer group in my home. Just, it was only, then it was only to another couple, you and myself. And we would lay in that floor and pray and cry out to God because we wanted to know God's will for our life. We had to know there was a hunger within us that was crying out for more and more and more of God. And oh, God answered our prayers. He and, did. Oh, he answered our prayers. You taught me how to pray. You taught me how to travail. You taught me how to sit at the feet of Jesus. You taught me that. Isn't that wonderful? You, you, not only did you teach me, you taught me, and then I caught it. You know, because the anointing has to be caught. Yes. And But I watched you, and I watched your purity and your hunger, and you were, you're relentless when God gives you a word, and you're relentless in your obedience, and you have a lot more living to do. There's so much in you that needs to keep being poured out. I need you. I need you. I'm asking for 95. I Well, I'm going to up it to 105. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not letting you go. <laughs> okay, so, and, and your kids aren't either. So tell everyone that doesn't know, because now they're going to want to tune into your program, tell Tell us about your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Well, let me just say this to those that are listening and that's having problems with their children, yeah. you know, or their little grandchildren. I did. I went through, literally went through a hell, you know, sometime. They, they just got in with the wrong groups of people, and it would just break my heart, and I would just cry and weep before the Lord. But I knew I had a promise. God said that He would give me my whole household. Yes. I wouldn't turn that loose. I kept reminding Him, you said my whole household. Now I have four children, and of course they have children of their own, and all four of them now love the Lord yes. in their way. Yes. Not in a way that somebody has tried to teach them, yeah. but out of their heart, they worship the Lord and serve the Lord. And of course, they've always wanted mother to retire. You've got to retire. Yeah. There is no retirement in this work. No, nope, not in the kingdom. No, <laughs> not in the kingdom of God. No, there's people out there everywhere that is needing a savior. Yeah. And oh, how they need the Holy Spirit. They do. They do. To come in and fill all those empty spots. That's the only reason I think that our children or grandchildren or whoever it may be, you know, take walks out of the, that into drugs because they're empty in there. Yeah. People can go to church and they can come out empty. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit yes. in our churches. We do. Oh, we do. We do need that so badly. And, and I know, I know there's someone look, listening now to us and their hearts are heavy. Yeah. Their hearts are broken. And they're wondering about their children. Will anything ever be uh, all right? You know, will it ever, will it ever come to pass? I just want to say, yes, it will yes, come it will. to pass. Yes, it will. And I, I was thinking about this scripture here in 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, verse 1 and 2 and 3, where um, Samuel, I mean, David was saying, is there anybody in Saul's family that I can bless. Yeah. I've done that, you know, not maybe in those words, but as I go into, you know, pastor's homes or whoever, whatever place I'm in, that's my first question. Is there anybody in here that I can bless? Yeah. And you and do. Say something, you know, to bless them. And finally someone told him about little Mephibosheth. Yeah. 
But you know what touches my heart so about him? Somebody dropped, dropped him. him. How many times have we started out in life to do something great for God? We felt like it was great. We felt like it's a great calling and so much to do. It would overwhelm us. But who dropped us? There's always someone waiting in the shadows to drop us, to ruin or try to come against the ministry that God has placed within me, within you, and within those that That's are listening right. to us. Oh, broken people. And it is our duty as ministers to love them back to victory. Don't tell me what they used to do and what they've done this and they've done. I don't want to hear that. I only want to hear about the goodness of yes. God that can reach down into that heart and into that love and just take that heart and wash it and cleanse it and fill it full of Jesus and put it back in them again. <laughs> That's what I like. I know. And you, you are, you... I I call you my spiritual mother, and so does my husband. But you are a spiritual mother to nations. You through your writing, you know, through your book that your six books that you've written. This this other one, Love in the Shadows, um, about uh, Mount Harbor. Yeah, Harbor. about the life yeah. of Zipporah, Moses' uh -huh. wife. Yes. Um, and I encourage people, you know, to get her books. It, it, I mean, you are such an it amazing. It really hasn't come out on the market yet. Oh, so they can't get it yet. No. Okay, soon. Have to wait Stay for tuned. It. <laughs> but when it gets here, woo. Well, you, but you, you mentor pastors, those in the fivefold ministries. You yes. have such a heart for uh, pastors' children, yes. leaders' children, oh. deacons, elders' children that have been hurt. And you, God just uses you to come in with this healing balm of Gilead. You know, I um, was thinking today about a, a time you came and stayed with us when we were in transition and, and we had been dropped and hurt and harmed and um, bruised, bruised and broken. Yeah, by, you know, by someone yes. that should not have. And I remember you just stayed. I think you stayed like three months. Yes. And my little Josiah, when I would be crying, he would go and knock on your door and say, Mammy. Can you come pray for my mom? <laughs> She's crying, and you Mimi. Would come. And she won't stop crying, <laughs> Mimi. <laughs> yes, how can I forget oh, that? And you just came. No judgment, no preaching, no analyzing, no evaluating, no, well, did you reap what you sowed? You just brought love, just pure love, restoring. Is it not the greatest gift? Though? It is. It is. It's the greatest gift. It is. That's what Jesus has for us, yeah. is love. Yeah. I know once I was telling him about how bad I was before I got saved. <laughs> oh, I was just really, you know, really sharing it with the Lord Jesus. And he spoke to my heart so clearly, I'll never forget it. He said, don't tell me about that woman again. I never knew her. Ooh. I only know this beautiful daughter of mine that is interceding here before me. That's huge. How many people keep telling the Lord about who they used to be before the blood and he doesn't know them? No. And the enemy, he wallows in that. He yeah. loves that. Yeah. Point, 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 point. Yeah. Pointing that finger, always pointing that finger at us. But thank the good Lord for redemption yes. through Calvary. Yes. Mm. I love how you say yes to God on crazy assignments. I know the Lord asked you um, years ago when, when, you, when, when you first heard the call and yeah. women weren't called and you no. didn't have a mentor. I had you. You had no one. No one believed in women preachers back then. So how did you get the courage I don't know other than I would just, I, I've been one that prayed a lot. And I don't mean that it's bragging. I didn't know the word like a lot of people knew the word yeah. and could quote it and quote it. But I would just get down on my knees and pray in the Holy Spirit and pray and cry and weep before <laughs> him. And he felt, I always tell him, you felt sorry for me. <laughs> No, he was attracted to that oh, broken and contrite yes, spirit. Yes, he said, I can't yes. do without you. So you prayed and then how did you 
No, he told you, I need you to be my vessel. I need you to be my mouthpiece. How did you know? He just spoke to my heart so clearly. So, you know, people say, the Lord speaks to you today. Absolutely, he speaks to us today. Yeah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and forever, and ever. And, and he ever. changes not. He changes not. <laughs> uh -uh. He, and you know, that that's so comforting. Oh, it is. The same way he spoke to him in the Old Testament, the same way he talked to him in the New Testament, it's the yes. same way he'll talk to us now. Yes. He wants relationship yes, with us. Does. Yes, he does. That's all he requires. And we want to try to put so many works in there. You know, when he speaks to me and he'll say, well, I've not been overseas for quite some time now, but when he would speak to me and say, I want you to go to the Philippines. I want you to go to Africa. I want you to go to Greece. I want you to go to Italy. I want you to go, you know, all around in Europe. I, and I think, me, a little Kentucky country <laughs> girl, and you're wanting me to do that? How can I do that? I can't speak any of their languages. But see, you can't make your, you, you've got to do what he tells you to do. Yes. And it's always someone there waiting for me that will take care of me and can interpret for me if it's needed. He's done miracles. You, I, I know your stories, miracle on miracle in foreign soil when you were in yes. danger, when there wasn't yes. clean water, when signs and miracles and wonders, he's just poured out to be your portion. But where he puts you, he takes care of you. Yeah. And that's, that's been your life. That's been my life. Yeah. If he says go, I go, I don't question it because I know he's got somebody there that's going to take care of me yeah. and watch over me. And it's like that everywhere I go, in America or overseas, yeah. anywhere. Mom Vilma, what do you say to the woman that feels lonely? She wants a husband. She wants companionship. She, she doesn't think that she can fulfill the call of God without it. What do you say to them? His name is Jesus. <laughs> That's a good reply. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. If you'll just turn your heart directly toward the Lord, really, you know, some people says, oh, I have done that and it didn't work for me. No, you didn't do something right because it always works. The Word works. Yes. Yes. It works. But that loneliness is probably the Holy Spirit that's wanting to come into that sweet little lady. Or that gentleman. We have gentlemen, you know, men that are looking for wives. Yeah. Where do I find one? Well, you know, don't knock on my door. <laughs> but, 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 you know, they're, they're out there. Yeah. But let God put it together. Yes. Let God put the marriage together. And when God puts it together. Now, I can remember back the way, uh, Miss Jen, when um, you, were, you were wanting to get married too. Yes. And so we prayed. Yeah, we did. And we prayed. And we did some fasting. We did. And uh, along came Ross. Uh, yes. <laughs> And it Handsome, was, oh my goodness. If it had been the outer appearance yeah. that, you know, that drew you to him, you would have just jumped off the bridge with him and gone on. <laughs> but that, it was, it was the Lord. He loved you, the Lord. He, he loved, loved Jesus. He loved the Lord. And when you love the Lord and you love the Lord too, then that's what made the family yeah. like this. And now it's almost 28 years that 28 we've been married. 28 years. Yeah. And five sons, two we adopted, three we gave birth to, 11 foster sons, seven grandsons. So, My little goodness. army. A whole army. Yeah. I can remember when you adopted the two little, first two little grandsons, yeah. well, my grandsons, yeah. your sons. Alvin and Dwayne. Yes. Yeah. God's they so faithful. They were just little things. They were so sweet. They were. They're still sort of sweet. <laughs> oh. Mimi, we're, we're kind of getting to the end here, and I just want to, I could do 10 shows to hear your stories and the way God's used you and flowed through you. But I just feel like there's a viewer. They, they might need to feel, they might need to be forgiven. They might, they might have been dropped. 
they, they might just say, I just don't feel loved. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to let the Holy Spirit move through you like he's done since the day mm -hmm. I met you and just minister and bring right. hope and healing. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are watching out there, that one that's so brokenhearted, God sees you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I can tell you he'll be there in the darkest of nights. He'll be there when you think there's no hope. He will be there for you, with you, and lead and guide and direct you. And if there, there is a husband for you or there is a wife for you men that are listening, God will absolutely prepare that person person and bring them to you. And you know where? You may meet them in the grocery store. You may meet them, you know, just walking in or walking out of a restaurant or something. Don't underestimate where God will bring your companion to you if that's what you want. But you want a companion that will absolutely walk with God, talk with God, and, and be such a blessing to you and you be a blessing to them and then get yourself in the best church you can find and have church in your home every night. Read the word with each other, get down beside your bed and bow before the Lord and pray and seek his heart. And when you seek God's heart, God's going to cleanse your heart more and more and more. And you'll have no eyes for any other woman. The men won't. And the and, and the ladies won't have any more eyes for any other man than the one God has given them. What a, oh, what a challenge it is to find that right one. You think it isn't when you put God first and put him in there. God will absolutely bring to you every need you have, every need. Bless you, bless you. And listen, please, Please support this the, Jen as she goes forth. You know, I, I'm getting a little older, but Jen is is just a she's just a piece off me. <laughs> Praise God, and I want she's going to be used mightily of God. So please, please support this. Listen, your comments are oh, we love to get your comments. Love to read your comments. God bless you tremendously in Jesus name. Thank you, Mom Velma. I love you so much. And thank you for watching today. I pray you receive ministry. I pray that if you have, are not born again, that you'll just say a simple prayer from your heart, receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, come home to him, dedicate your life to him, have that childlike faith, live a surrendered life, get in his face. He loves you, join us on another program, and I'm so blessed that you've been a part of today.